Welcome to E4M Tech Munch uh, virtual series. And uh, today uh, we're going to discuss uh, how will digital content consumption pan out in the post COVID scenario. And with me, I have a powerful uh, panel. I would call it uh, Pavan Sarta, Group Head Digital Marketing and E Commerce Future Group. I have uh, Neil Pandya, Head of um, uh, Media L'Oreal. I have uh, Shashi Mukherjee, Head Digital Marketing, uh, Reckit Benkiza. And uh, uh, I have uh, Shamsudeep Jasani, Group MD, South Asia, Isobar. Welcome all of you to this uh, first uh, uh, webinar uh, of uh, E4M uh, Tech Month. Um, I want to start by first understanding uh, briefly, I mean, how has the lockdown experience been for people who have been always on the move, who, who would not get even five minutes, uh, you know, time to look at their uh, phones? I mean, how has the experience been so far? Yeah, I mean, should I start? Yes, yes. Yeah, I think uh, that's something which no one accept, uh, expected. Uh, and it took us a lot of time to even accept it, right? I mean... Uh, I think there was always a sense of denial in the beginning that maybe, you know, there's a talk, maybe it's not going to happen, maybe it's for a week, maybe it's for five days. Uh, it took us some time to kind of accept it and then we realized that, you know, it's, it's something which is here to stay. Uh, obviously, from a business perspective, it, it, it took us a while to kind of understand how do we react to a situation like this. Uh, there was no clarity in the beginning in terms of, you know, what we can do, what we can sell, what we cannot sell. I think it just took everybody some time to kind of settle down and accept the new uh, ways of functioning, right? Um, we are so used to like meeting each other, working with each other, like, and, you know, going into a Zoom life. I think it took us some time to kind of adjust. But I think right now it just seems like the momentum is back and I feel that, you know, there's a lot happening. Once again, I think we have accepted it, but definitely we don't want it to be, uh, we don't want to be in this situation for too long. That, that's for sure. Neil, I see you changing your style as well. I mean, is that a lot of time? <laughs> I knew that was coming to me. And I, Pawan, Pawan rightly said on the business, I think it's the same for all the categories and all the industries. I'm not going to touch upon on that. But on the, uh, so it's my, uh, I know I was talking to you guys earlier, it's my 46th day of lockdown. So that's where the style and look has come up. But yeah, I'm loving it. I mean, I'm, I'm trying new things. Uh, like you know, online courses of uh, cooking and fitness, and in fact, L'Oreal itself is uh, giving us you know every evening six to seven certain webinars around you know Zumba, yoga, and other stuff. So I think uh, uh, I'm liking it. But as Pawan said earlier, I don't think so. I will be enjoying it if it is going to yeah. continue for a long time. So waiting for it to get over. Hey, hi. So uh, yes, definitely. You know, uh, none of us were prepared, right? But, uh, you know, find, looking at the trend, in fact, uh, especially, uh, you know, one of the brands that I manage directly is Dettol, uh, which has kind of, you know, become a more household name than ever at the moment. And um, I think we were uh, the first ones to kind of, you know, identify it and, you know, a mega kind of an educational campaign around uh, hand washing was started on 14th of March, uh, way before the lockdown even started, because we figured the, the way the entire thing is going. And uh, the, that's, that's the first port of call to kind of, you know, fight the infection. So I think that is part of the, the work front. But yes, yeah, so uh, I'm a struggling cook and an amateur house help at the moment. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I think that's been there. Uh, honestly, that and work kind of, you know, takes up all my time. Uh, I only pick and choose the webinars, not like everybody doing a lot of stuff, but you know, I think I'm barely managing my household chores and the work uh, that I'm doing. And yes, in between, so, you know, like leisure calls with friends on videos, I think that's pretty much about it. That takes my day, that takes like about 18 hours of my day. So uh, it's quite hectic, but yeah, I think uh, all we are saying about new normal, I think uh, easier said than done. Uh, it's very difficult. It can't be the new normal. We definitely need to kind of, you know, get back to it ASAP. And uh, yeah, it's it's yeah. very far from new normal, I would say. Shamsa, your experience of this lockdown, quickly. Oh, so I'm in a slightly different position because I, I'm the agency out here. So, 
slightly different representing all the ideas and thoughts but i'll start from uh, myself so for the past 20 years i've been uh, i've loved going to office it's a very big part of me personally and uh, I've, i've hardly and hardly ever taken a day off it's just a it's a fun thing to do it's a it's very important thing for me to do so right now i'm at that stage where i am now slightly slightly losing it uh, i think if this lockdown extends i might i might really lose it so so yeah it's it's difficult right now i'm actually doing more calls and more work than uh, before the lockdown there's just tremendous amount of calls that are happening there's just tremendous amount of connections that are happening uh, yes there's a lot of pressure on the agencies right now because um, you know what we are doing is that we're planning for the future uh, more than just planning for what we are going to do after the lockdown uh, ends hopefully it ends soon uh for personal front yes i think everyone is trying to cook <laughs> everyone is realizing that we are becoming cooks on one way or the other and i think that's where uh, everyone realizes it's not that difficult uh, though i would not like to continue it's not okay i just want to make a small announcement that we are uh, live on facebook and uh, on twitter you can uh, tweet uh, using the hashtag uh, techmunch and uh, hashtag eforum webinar we'll also be taking live questions uh, uh, as we move on uh, my first question to uh, pavan is to you uh, yeah i mean there we are witnessing a certain kind of spike uh, since the lockdown started uh, and we see a lot of digital content being consumed of all sorts i want to understand that is this a trend uh, that will also survive post this lockdown or it is a reversible uh, thing and i mean might not be there later on how do you see this uh, the kind of culture of consumption that we're witnessing on the digital front uh so as an organization uh, we've been a big endorser of digital uh, you know for a long time now i think we believed we believed in the medium a lot uh, therefore i think there was an the intent of creating a certain ecosystem uh, whether it's youtube and instagram or anywhere else from a social perspective uh, and whether it's our online brands or offline brands but yeah i think we were we were early enough to realize the potential of it uh, so i think we invested uh, you know in the last 2 3 years i mean if i if i have to say it right so in in a way uh, this is this is something which i believe uh, will obviously change the course i mean in the way of whether it's content consumption and so on because i think uh at this point in time uh, uh, uh i mean even earlier at this point in time i think it's much higher that people are spending a lot more time on their mobile phone uh whether it's uh, whether it's now now it's even a work which has been added up to a mobile phone currently i'm i'm live uh, doing uh, doing the uh, you know uh, 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 the discussion right now on a mobile phone right i mean that's going to be very very important even going forward uh, there can be a spike and then there can be a new normal that's a separate thing but i think as an organization we always believed in it uh, at this point in time this is the only medium which we are using right now to engage our, uh, engage with our audience or even create reach with our audience there's no other medium which we are using currently because television is absolutely a no no for us at this point in time because if you look at entire country not all the stores are open right uh, there are some stores open in some zone and there are some stores which are closed there are there are lots of uh, uh, geographical challenges which i think which is happening across the country right uh, press as we all know that it's not being distributed well so the only medium which remains for us is actually digital and we are also doing a lot of education to our customers you know while while, while we are saying you know how we are prepared we are equally telling them how they should be prepared when they come for shopping right and uh, things like you know uh, even before you come Uh, to the store we are giving them digital coupons so that they don't waste much time and they don't spend a lot of time inside the store so i think uh, a lot of it which we are helping to ensure that there is a bit of social distancing uh, which we are able to create for our customers we really don't want them to go through any further anxiety at this point in time i think we are uh, we are we are open with uh, with you know a uh, bare essential what the government has allowed but we want to ensure that you know it reaches to them as much as possible so in the meanwhile we've also gone digital like you know bigbazaar.com has been created uh, in in like 10 days we never thought that we'll go we will we will go uh, or we will uh, bigbazaar will ever go for e-commerce it was fpb which always was a part of a uh, digital ecosystem but it bigbazaar wasn't uh, but we just realized that you know at this point in time consumers customers need it maybe they don't want to come to the store so we should go 
you know, to them. So I think lots of changes which has happened in last one month, lots of things which we have learned from the customer. We are trying to address it on a daily basis, whatever we can do under whatever restrictions. Uh, Shams, the same question to you. Um, this time I can hear you. Yeah, I mean, I would surely, the audio is better now. Um, is this spike temporary? Is this here to stay? What is your observation? Uh, no, so I, I see that uh, it's, it's not going to be sustained at the level that it is right now. Uh, there is a spike, of course, in terms of usage of digital. Uh, there will be an increase, which is, uh, I would say, uh, it, it, it's not business as usual, even after the lockdown finishes. So it's not going to go back to the levels that were there earlier. I'm talking about the people going out and, of course, uh, in the physical environment. So I think the digital is here to stay, which everyone knows about. The activity is going to be much bigger than before. But yes, it's going to taper off a little. I don't think it's going to sustain at the level that it is right now. Um, I've worked in all my life, but uh, I think there is a tapering off that will happen. Uh, whether you talk about consumption on online uh, OTT platforms or whether you talk about e-commerce, uh, the, the main thing is that what this has bought is there are lots of people who would not have um, you know, who would not have experienced this ever are experiencing how to do this for the first time. Like demonetization and like payments happened in uh, earlier, uh, in about two and a half years back, people are experiencing e-commerce for the first time. There are a lot of people who are understanding how to buy online. Uh, there, are, there are people like my father-in-law, I hope he's not watching right now. Uh, there are people like my father-in-law who was not doing a lot of stuff like even net banking, for example. Uh, and you know, because he knew that uh, my 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 uh, son-in-law or my my daughter is right here, they'll just do it for me. Now they're stuck on their own. So what's what this is doing is that a lot of people are now started understanding what digital is to the core. Earlier, a lot of us used to help them. There are a lot of new, a lot of the older generation, a lot of the people who weren't exposed to it. Those people are now coming online because they don't have a choice now. So I think that is one big change that is happening. They will start understanding that it's relatively easier because there was a there was a block in their mind. So I think that is one big change that is going to happen. And I think the other big change that is going to happen is this whole uh, TV versus uh, online video consumption and content is going to change drastically on what is TV and what is digital. I think that question is going to change as we go into the future. I think a lot more video is going to play and video is going to get its right um, you know, space rather than just television. So I think that is one big change, the two big changes that I see from a content perspective that are there. Uh, but I do believe that that tapering off will again happen. We'll go back to our offices, physical environment will open up. But I think we are moving towards a more digital world where the whole idea of, um, you know, for example, when uh, we're talking about the future group and we're talking about Big Bazaar, you have to have both you need to be able to you know, address a problem saying that there, there's a store right here called Neelam, very, very close to my house. You can buy everything online and you just go and uh, pick it up. Uh, that's all they're doing right now. So they've sped up their e-commerce, for example, one store. Okay, It's just one store out here. It's not a chain. It's one store. They've used a Shopify uh, you know, backend and they've started uh, selling stuff. So And lots and lots of people. So I think it's it is an amalgamation. Things will stay, but I, I think the tapering of digital will happen. It's, it's not going to sustain at this point. Uh, Shashi, to you, so uh, do you think in this lockdown, we're also building this habit uh, of uh, leaning towards digital and uh, as uh, Sham said that, you know, we'll carry this habit forth and a digital kind of a setup will emerge. I mean, how do you see this? Mute. Sorry, your audio is here. Sure. I think the interesting thing to note here is that while, uh, you know, consumers are kind of, you know, changing their, uh, you know, their behaviors, yeah, also like most of the organizations are kind of, you know, going through a forced digital transformation, which the CXOs couldn't do, uh, but COVID did, right? Now, again, this is something that is changing so fast. So, for example, we have kind of, you know, always, uh, you know, given a lot of focus on digital as a platform for for our, uh, you know, uh, for our key brands, right? Uh, the the entire, because, you know, more indoor time definitely means more idle time and therefore more watch time, right? Uh, 
uh, things are going off the roof. Uh, videos is going up, gaming is going shooting up. Uh, social platforms are sort of you know seeing 30 to 40 percent growth, uh, uh, you know, month on month, just a month to compare. But uh, what worries me is that you know with the current scenario that is going on, yes, there will be a residual impact even after the lockdown ceases because people would have been seen, been exposed to very new OTTs that they would have never, never kind of you know uh, uh, considered because most of the shows on TVs and everything they are you know there are no new the reality show is dead for example right no new production that is happening at that scale that it used to do. GECs are popping across TV. So uh, uh, people, the baseline will shift definitely post lockdown. But currently, uh, the concern that I have, like more from an industry point of view is that more people are online, but lesser brands are on advertising, you know? So content is being created, but how sustainable it is uh, without the advertising money put, put in because uh, the, the base, base is up and the advertising revenue is going down. So that's something to be kind of, you know, to be, we should be basically watching it. And then how it kind of, you know, pans out. Neil, your thoughts on it? Um, yeah. I, <laughs> so I read somewhere uh, that, you know, uh, it takes 21 days to build a habit. And we are here talking about, you know, three months of a strong habit. So <laughs> to answer, yeah, a quarter. So to answer your question, uh, Rohel, I think uh, the spike which we are seeing right now, I don't think so. It's temporary only. Uh, it will continue uh, post COVID too. Because, you know, all of us are pretty much aware that, you know, digital uh, spends are on a spike. I mean, be it uh, pre-COVID area times also that 25-30% digital has been growing. Uh, Post-COVID, there are multiple reasons why I feel that this there will be a new normal which will be higher than the earlier normal. Uh, one of them is which I mentioned about habit building. People are habituated to, uh, to content. Second, which is, you know, uh, we all are very clear that COVID is defined into three stages. The outbreak, recovery and the sustainable. We saw that outbreak, man, there's a spike of digital consumption. The recovery stage, which will nearly come soon, which will last for a quarter or something, uh, will also have this habits because people will be worried. I mean, I, I will be worried to go to cinema hall, to go and buy into shopping, uh, work from home, which has become now a great uh, uh, phenomenon for most of us, will continue for a longer time. There are organizations who are thinking this work from home as a larger perspective time band also. So keeping this, uh, there will be a lot of free time and me time for individuals. So me time to consume uh, gross, uh, you know, cooking, fitness and other content and uh, free time for largely because I'm still worried to look at news and other stuff. So I see that particular uh, content consumption will definitely continue for more time post COVID. I just want to announce again that we are live on Facebook. We're taking questions on Zoom and Facebook. If uh, our watch, the viewers have any uh, questions, they can post it. We'll, we'll be asking our panelists. Uh, and we can tweet uh, using hashtag TechMunch and hashtag Inforum webinar. Uh, uh, you know, with this spike in uh, 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 brand communication on digital, there's also a cacophony of uh, communication. Everyone is there. Everybody is communicating. In order to stand out in terms of brand communication, are there any do's and don'ts that you have uh, in mind? Any advice for the practitioners of digital? Uh, yeah. Yeah, of, uh, sorry, there's some disturbance, but uh, a couple of things that. If it can, if. Yeah. Okay. That's better. Uh, so, so a couple of things that we are recommending to brands first is be genuine. Don't, don't use COVID-19 to start something new in terms of, you know, going out and starting an outreach program because of COVID-19. Uh, see what's happening is that the, the, the customer is very smart. Uh, he or she sees through what you're doing. If you've been genuine throughout and you are adding a COVID related communication right now, then that's okay. But don't start something at this point in time because then people will see it as if you're taking advantage of what is happening right now. So that's number one. Right. Uh, number two, uh, what we are trying to do is actually we're taking a pause right now. Uh, there is a lot of communication that is happening. There is There are lots of which are genuinely talking about what is happening. And, and if your brand really, like for example, if this at all and if, if uh, you know, future group, they are involved in what is happening right now. There are brands which aren't. If there is an auto category which is completely shut right now, yes, you want to keep the communication on, you want to engage your customers, but at the same time, I think 
uh, what we are trying to do is using this time to not do just work as usual. That is going to happen when the lockdown ends because a lot of clients that we have right now right. are not actually operational. Uh, so yes, while the communication is on, while the brand communication is on, uh, we are trying to see if you're going to be relevant three years down the line, not just a month down the line. This is a great time to kind of step back and understand, are you ready for what is going to happen because of digital three years down the line? So when, um, you know, when uh, uh, there was someone talking about it, saying that, you know, uh, this, is, uh, this is about digital transformation, COVID-19 is bringing it all around digital transformation. Those are the discussions that we're having with the clients. Uh, we're saying that take a pause, understand all your assets, are your assets ready for life three years down the line? And to a lot of clients, they're not. I mean, like, for example, how many clients are using voice right now as a platform? Even today, I mean, we've spoken about it so much. Uh, voice is something that is going to come and really take center stage very soon. So how are you, when you're sitting at home, when you're talking about it, most of your searches are slowly, steadily going to happen through voice. How are you preparing yourself for a world like that? And that's where a lot of our discussions are in. Yes, if your brand is relevant, let's talk about it. If there is no relevancy right now, don't talk about it. Because if you're not relevant, uh, there is enough in people making a lot of noise about it. Don't talk about it right now. Let's keep our focus toward what we're going to do in the future. How are we going to come through this? And let's use this type of strategies. That's what uh, we are actually talking to a lot of brands about. Shashi, welcome back. Um... I'll come. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the uh, question I had asked uh, Shams was that uh, while there is, uh, you know, spike in digital uh, communication as well, but uh, there's a lot of noise around it. How do we avoid this noise and uh, make sure that our, we are heard in this uh, cacophony? So, uh, you know what I'm going to say. Uh, so for me, I mean, I don't see this as a marketing opportunity, right? Uh, what people actually, uh, consumers are, what today they are looking, I mean, when you say about consumers, I think just look at, look at, like, what are we looking at? What, are, what am I looking at? You know, the brand, consumers looking at hope, positivity, and some sort of a comfort in, in this trying times, right? And therefore, you know, what brand can do if they are looking at, what we can do is we can, actually provide them, uh, you know, uh, a combination of information entertainment, and a bit of help wherever possible, right? And which uh, I think I completely uh, go with what Shams said, that not all brands need to be active. Anybody who has a point of view and uh, so basically, and if there is nothing for you to add in these times, I'm not sure whether uh, this is a, uh, this, this isn't any other uh, you know, a topical trend that brands tend to kind of, you know, leverage. So, uh, in and a typical, uh, you know, like we all do, a typical buy-sell narrative is not going to work. Uh, and uh, so I think it's time for us to be more human and less business-like, uh, is what I would say. Uh, for you know, the, Those are the basic do's and don'ts. And if, if, you have in the, if you have the right, uh, you know, lane that you're on, if you have something meaningful, meaningful to talk about, go ahead. But if there isn't uh, a forced uh, kind of a fit, will actually stand out uh, as my soul, I feel. Uh, Paul, I want to come to you with the same question that uh, Future Group is doing so much on that digital front. Um, how do you ensure that you are heard? Yeah, so, you know, uh, again, if you look at it, uh, most of our stores and otherwise, we are like a service brand, right? I mean, at this point in time, uh, more than anything else, if you are able to service our customers, I think that's all is required, right? Yeah. Uh, not about any, and that's the biggest brand building what we can do to ourselves, right? So I, I think at this point in time, what we are really focusing on is the the entire part of saying that you know how can you how can you have a safe shopping, you know, when you come to the store or otherwise, or you go to any other store, it doesn't matter, right? I think a lot of education which we are providing uh, from that front and and that's how we are dealing with it and 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 I and I think all of us are somewhere agreeing to the fact that you know this whole social distancing as an idea is going to be here for a longer period right mm -hmm. I don't think even after the lockdown is removed people are not going to run to the malls we are very very well aware about it right and therefore uh, as a brand as a service brand we want to ensure that we showcase some of these things to our customer and make them feel comfortable 
I think that's all is important at this at this point in time. Just being relevant, just adding, you know, just giving them comfort is what we want to do. Uh, uh, you know, as as long as we are able to give them a meaningful shopping in whatever less time possible. So therefore, at any point in time in the store, we don't allow more than seven to eight people, right? Because we want them to get that comfort. I think uh, just being relevant is most important for us at this point in time. Uh, we are looking at every customer's anxiety and what we can provide. Uh, we are providing essentials to our store, uh, to our customers. So we are very well aware of the fact that we just have to ensure that if we can make it possible for them. That is all we are focusing on at this point in time. Neil, how is L'Oreal doing it differently? Staying, uh, making sure that we are heard, the communication is on point. You know, I, I mean, a couple of people said earlier that, you know, if you are not a relevant category in this particular time period, do not talk. Uh, in the market, but I have a different point of view, you know, from a marketer's point of view, uh, this is an apt opportunity. I mean, viewership is on spike. I wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, you know, I, I would, I would think twice before making this as an opportunity or letting it as a backfiring it. So I would suggest there are typical do's and don'ts which we need to follow. I will start with don'ts first because it's, uh, it's, it's important to know what you don't do. Yeah. So I, I disagree with a couple of people that, you know, you, uh, don't go silent. I feel, uh, don't, uh, when I say don't go silent, I mean, the customer is your extended family. You might not be in a relevant products and services, but you need to ensure you are engaging with him in somewhere or other. It could be, uh, you know, just a good wives engagement or something like, uh, something like on those grounds. Uh, but don't, don't really go silent. I also feel that, you know, do not, uh, do not think from a short term perspective now. Anything which you will do it now, you will be in a space where you'll earn a consumer's loyalty for a really long term. So whatever you do, do it from a long term thinking, do not do it from short term. And typically, if you want to do something, as I think Shashi also mentioned that, you know, be human. Uh, these are times where it is very emotional, sensitive, whatever communication you are doing, understand, put yourself into customers point of your shoes and uh, be human while you're communicating. And really important uh, things which you need to uh, cater, uh, Ruhel, I feel is uh, one is that, you know, the tonality, uh, the timing and the, the tonality of the brand or communication which you are doing should be positive, should be more human uh, to that extent. And uh, lastly, uh, monitoring uh, whatever creative assets you have right now and you're using it right now is really important. I mean, what? Uh, take for an example, you have a slapstick humor as a creator. You really do not want to use that humor right now when the consumer is in a very different mindset. So taking into consideration what 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 the situation is all about and doing the right thing and the right creative, I think that's these are typical do's and don'ts any brand need to uh, think about it before they are talking in this situation. Right, 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 right. perfect. Uh, I want to come to you, uh, Pavan. Uh, you know, um, will this um, focus on digital and the fact that we're doing, uh, we're getting used to digital now. Will it also impact the marketing spends on digital by brands? Will digital again become a bigger piece in terms of spending as far as uh, most of the brands are concerned in our post-COVID week? Yeah, so uh, uh, let's look at uh, before the COVID uh, happened to our life. Uh, because we are a retail store and I think some of our brands like FPB uh, needs to connect with the younger audience a lot more. Uh, from a target audience perspective. So as that's why I said that we had adopted digital way, way in advance because we knew that, you know, some of the customers for a retail format like FBB, if you need to recruit, you need to connect with the younger audience and therefore digital became extremely relevant for us. And I think we are, we, we've used a lot more of social because we were able to do online to offline from there and really create walk-ins inside the store. Uh, so I think uh, uh, we've used social more than anything else. Uh, I mean, I, I will definitely accept that. Uh, going forward, because obviously, I think the way if you look at our business is is going to expand, and uh, I think doorstep delivery, uh, you know, booking online, picking it up from the store, booking online, and we delivering it. I think there are lots of uh, ways in the business is going to expand. I mean, these these are some of the things which uh, is going to be there for us uh, going forward. It's not something which you have done it only for a certain time and then we want to move out. The moment uh, when it comes to, uh, let's say, booking online and picking up from the, uh, from the store, 
I think digital will become far more efficient medium for us is what I believe in. Uh, we will we will see how it goes. But yeah, I think some of these differences, uh, which is which has made to our business today, it definitely makes me believe that I think our digital portion from a spend perspective will further increase. That uh, you know that that I'm fairly confident. Also, being a retail brand, geography, different city. There's a lot of, uh, you know, some of these things, uh, you know, play a big factor. I think digital is one medium and of course press uh, to some extent can address some of these things for us. Uh, so, yeah, I think I definitely think so. Right. Uh, Shams, um, uh, what about this culture of spending by brands? Will it uh, kind of rearrange itself and digital will focus, uh, have a bigger focus? Uh, see, before uh, before COVID, in a normal sense, uh, digital was supposed to grow at about 29-30%. to Most reports that we had was the overall industry spend was about 11-12% and uh, digital is 30%. So digital is al already something which has been growing at a much faster pace and hence the pie has been growing even in a non-COVID kind of a scenario. Uh, I would say that this is going to speed it up uh, and a uh, couple of things that are going to happen. Number one is that lots of brands are realizing that first party e-commerce is going to be a big thing. Uh, I think that's one, one thing that is a tipping, slight tipping point that is happening is that, and in a post-COVID scenario, a lot more brands are going to think of first party e-commerce. By that I mean that it's not just, of course you'll have third party e-commerce, but also first party e-commerce. And especially those which have stores, uh, which have offline stores are going to really think about rating their first party e-commerce uh, program. So I think that's going to be number one. And hence, that will relate to brand spending, not only brand monies, but also money on their e-commerce platform. So that's, that's of course, going to be one part of it. Another thing that's happened in this, and not too many people have spoken about it, is in between this COVID, the Facebook geo dealers happened. Uh, that's going to be another game changer as far as our industry is concerned. Uh, and uh, the repercussions are going to be massive as we go ahead. Again, my another word I, I want to use again is digital. It's not going to be just a digital uh, kind of phenomena. It's going to be a digital. It's going to be a lot about how SMEs are going to be empowered with this. Uh, imagine what WeChat is in the in the US. Yeah. Uh, so in in China, imagine WhatsApp becoming the WeChat of uh, of India, where you're in the platform and you have, you do everything within the platform. So. Uh, so a lot of things have changed. I do believe this is going to only increase the spends and, and thankfully for the for, for almost 12 years uh, in my, I've been on online for 20 years, but the first 12 years, digital is coming, digital is coming is what we would say. <laughs> Finally, I think now, now we are there where we can say, okay, digital has come and now is the time that it, the acceleration is happening. You needed a COVID, you needed a, um, you know, need demonetization for that push to happen. This is another a scenario where it's going to speed up. Uh, yes, it, it is totally going to increase the layouts of a lot of, and not just marketing things, but overall business and how business is going to look at digital is going to uh, transform. That's what's uh, going to happen. Uh, Neil, uh, the same question to you. Uh, uh, I think most of it heard between the both of them, but it is, I, I can summarize this into two pillars of why I see digital spends going to grow. I mean, first pillar, all of us are very much aware, you know, that digital has been growing at 25-30%. It will continue to grow. It's not a new story post-COVID itself. But uh, why? Uh, it, as an added advantage during COVID times, you know, businesses are in trouble. So there will be limited money to spend. Uh, and when there will be a limit, the pie of money will be reduced. Uh, most of it will be more focused into efficient medium. And all of us are aware that digital as a medium is pretty much efficient because uh, because of the sharper targeting, because of the last funnel of conversion, which is available through digital. So for a short, uh, short term post COVID, I think this spike will be far higher than what it has seen earlier. And the second point, which I think somewhere uh, Shams also mentioned was that, you know, globally, we have seen a trend that, you know, during COVID time and post COVID also, there is e-commerce business which is uh, flourishing really well. Again, because, you know, when people are worried, they do not want to step out to a mall and buy some stuff, then e-commerce will come into a picture. And when you're talking about your business uh, dependency on e-com, which is large and a lower funnel game, I feel digital will do a better job. So most of the brands uh, who, who will stop spending on cinemas and other stuff where people are not going to move will shift that money towards digital and that will lead uh, to digital spends being increased. So I think it's in short, I see that as in 
uh, spike going upward only. Uh, Shashi, I want to uh, ask you this question. Uh, there was a technical glitch by the way. So I was asking um, uh, them that, uh, you know, with this shift towards uh, digital, a lot of focus on digital, uh, uh, will the brands also look at digital spending in a different way post this uh, COVID scenario? So uh, I think most of the points have been, you know, covered by Neil, Shams and everybody else. Uh, so yes, the thing is because the distribution isn't, uh, you know, exactly, uh, you know, distributed well, for example, you know, few shops have, have some things and, you know, for example, even it's, it's at a staggered fashion, right? So looking at a, a broad, you know, like a carpet bombing kind of a media, uh, people are actually a bit about putting it there, right? And therefore, uh, barring, of course, essential uh, FMCG categories, uh, barring that, there are uh, people are sort of signaling at different pockets to kind of, you know, uh, activate, uh, you know, their, their marketing. And therefore, digital, uh, you know, comes like, uh, you know, it comes like a knight in a shining armor. That, okay, this is the guy who can do it, right? And now when you sort of, you know, put your, uh, uh, you know, put your bed behind it, and then, you know, we have seen about six weeks of, uh, you know, uh, uh, post-lockdown kind of a scenario, People are increasingly getting more comfortable uh, with with uh, you know different uh, aspects of digital, right? Uh, for example, with the social distancing, like the e-com again will go up. So I see the media mix changing, uh, uh, and uh, part of it will be forced adoption to begin with. But then overall, that will become the new normal, as I said earlier. So definitely, we will see some sort of you know shifting happening between the between and digital uh, appears to be the, you know, to get the windfall gains, I feel. I just want to add, uh, I think Neil had pointed sure. out, uh, one thing which is definitely going to happen is huge reduction of budget for sure, like across, right? I think the entire, uh, if you see the financial year, the first quarter is really wiped out for many brands and businesses. I think marketing has to play a very, very efficient role right now. And I think as for that, I think every marketing team has to decide that, you know, where does it come from? Where does the efficiency come from? And I'm sure a lot of decision will be taken from there. I don't think many marketing teams will have the liberty to kind of expand and have the luxury to spend. I think that is also going to determine a lot in terms of where the spend is going to happen. Um, I, I will go to, so we are live on Facebook and we are uh, getting a lot of questions. So I'll start with some of them, you know. Uh, the first question is from uh, Minakshi SM. Uh, she's asking, um, I'll come to you first, Jumps, for this question. Uh, assuming uh, videos uh, on digital, uh, assuming videos on digital is the new normal post COVID, what kind of video content is suggested for brands? There's no one size at all. I mean, that's going to be a very difficult answer in terms of how. See, it, it depends. Content is going to be a big strategy, uh, whether post-COVID or pre-COVID, that doesn't change. We've, we've, we've really beefed up our content business. And I, I don't think anyone will refute that the whole content influencer marketing uh, side of the business when it comes to videos, etc., uh, is really exploding. Whether you're talking about uh, really created videos or curated videos, uh, it really depends upon you know, your strategy and how well are you using content. Every brand has to use content, irrespective of which part of the business, which industry you're looking at. Because increasingly, what's happening is that uh, people are moving away from ad-funded uh, and slowly moving into more content-related platforms where people are just wanting to view platforms, uh, so content rather. So in that, it's about being able to use long format and short format content. Both of these need to be used in the right way along with the influencer marketing uh, strategy. So I think uh, uh, video is here to stay, content is here to stay. It really depends upon your strategy as to where does it sit in your, uh, you know, in your communication strategy. So it, that's, that's really one thing that I would be very clear about. Um, Neil, I want to come to you. Uh, there's a question from Sandeep Srivastava. He's asking that uh, there's a great increase uh, of viewership on news channels, you know, uh, with such views, uh, could news stay on as a popular segment even post-COVID-19? 
Definitely. I mean, I, there are two, again, uh, two sides of a coin in terms of an increase in the viewership also. So I believe Sandeep, uh, definitely news will become, uh, will stay important because in the recovery state, as I also mentioned earlier, people will be worried and concerned and would look up to news uh, for uh, what, what's happening in the market all about. But it is a two-edged two, uh, two uh, sword, I can say. Yeah, because if you, you cannot take this opportunity as news overall only to advertise because you wouldn't want your brand uh, communication always be present in a news uh, genre which is which is currently very emotional and sensitive news are going on. So you wouldn't want a chirpy communication coming after uh, a death story which is covered by a news genre. So you need to play really well how you will use that news genre. But uh, to answer to your question, news will continue for a long time in terms of viewership growth, I believe. Uh, uh, Pawan, uh, same question from, uh, similar question from Vivek Pandey. He's asking that, uh, uh, will uh, news genre uh, post a bigger challenge to digital than rest of uh, the you know uh, TV like or print? Is news genre becoming uh, the direct competition to digital marketing? See, uh, I, I don't know. It's about uh, one medium versus another. I think every medium has a role to play. Uh, for example, at this point in time, when we speak, I think our internal databases you know, is, is the biggest medium what we have figured and that's what is, is giving us maximum traction. As I said that, you know, it's, it's really going to depend in terms of what we want to achieve and what we want to do. I think every medium will have a role. Uh, I particularly believe that, you know, television is a medium where brands are built. I think the stories are told very, very well uh, in a 30 second format. Uh, press is something which I completely believe in will continue to create conversion for us and that's not going to change because we are a retail brand. Uh, Saturday morning, anybody looks at, you know, newspaper and says that, you know, what's going on in a retail store, that'll always help. I'm not talking about today. I'm just talking about even six months or a year down the line or two years down the line, right? And, and digital is something which we really use to recruit newer customer, create online to offline, and we'll continue to do so. So I, I don't have an answer saying that, you know, this medium is going to increase more. See, these are all topicality. At this point in time, because of COVID, that seems to be the... You know, we want real-time information. I'm sure each one of us, we go back and check, you know, worldwide, what are the numbers? You know, what's going on, right? I hope that we'll not continue to check this after three months, hopefully. You know, I'm just praying. So I think things will change. Uh, things will emerge. But yeah, I think every medium has a role to play. It will continue to uh, be that, uh, for sure. Right. Uh, Shashi, uh, uh, if you can hear me, there's a question from Mega Parekh. Uh, who's asking, what do you think of brands who have deviated from their core business and started talking about uh, act activities like exercise, food, drawings, you know, they keep customers engaged. How do you see that kind of communication? Uh, okay, so uh, if I'm able to understand the question correctly, uh, you're saying the brands which are, uh, you know, originally not talking yes. about these areas, right? Yes. So I, I think yes, uh, uh, yes and no part of it. I mean, it depends, you know, in, in what and depend which industry are we talking about. So for example, uh, yes, uh, talking about, for example, this comes all under self-care, for example, right? And the comfort that consumer are seeking today, uh, this and also the kind of uh, frustration that we are sort of, you know, dealing with, we simply uh, are looking at, you know, different vents to kind of, you know, do things, right? Be it recipes, be it cooking, be it, you know, the way you sweep your room or whatever that is, right? Now, the thing is that uh, this is a, this looks like a tactical thing to me as of now, as long as it doesn't have a long-term kind of a, a, a strategy, then, uh, you know, we need to be a bit careful of, you know, where, where we are treading because we need to also, as I, as I said earlier, you know, stay in the lane is what I will uh, say again. Uh, you know, I mean, yes, uh, maybe we can take like, you know, move to the next lane, but we just can't move to the other side of the, uh, you know, uh, freeway. So that I think uh, we need to be a bit more careful of, you know, where we tread because yes, uh, it looks like a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, this thing, uh, a very fertile opportunity as a, as a topical thing to sort of, you know, ride on because, you know, if you look at the searches, if you look at the conversation, it is skyrocketing. If you have, if you, even if you just use a hashtag, it will be picked up. But do you want to sort of, you know, 
be there or not, or if there's a long-term strategy. So I think a knee-jerk reaction, we uh, should be a bit careful of doing it. So yes and no, that's why the, the kind of field answer remains. Uh, Shams, uh, for you, uh, there's a question from Rajiv Dash. He is asking, uh, how can game, gamification uh, help the brand? And is there any particular aspect that one needs to do while designing the gamification part to engage uh, you know, stakeholders? So gamification, again, has been there since a very long time. Uh, games are something which have been utilized very well by a lot of, uh, of, lot of uh, brands. Uh, I would say rather than creating your own game, because a lot of people have tried it, un un unless you really have a sustained uh, content uh, business which, which sustains, like for example, if Red Bull is creating a game, or if you are into that as a longer term strategy, that's great. But if you're going to create a game which is tactical, uh, campaign based, it's not really something that I would recommend at this point in time, rather that you partner with the right kind of platforms to be able to have more relevancy uh, in that. So I think there are two ways to do it. If you can think of yourself being relevant uh, and that game being relevant at a longer state, then go ahead and create that game because the user has X amount of time on his phone, X amount of bandwidth on his phone. Uh, he or she is not going to download a new content game just because you've created it. Uh, it needs to be relevant for the customer. And so, so I would say that if you want to take advantage of the gaming, use the right kind of platform, partner with the right kind of platform, and then get into gaming rather than creating your own game. I, I, that's what I truly believe in. Uh, and if you have that as a longer term strategy, I can really make a difference. And you think that uh, you know it's relevant to the customer and he or she is going to leave 20 other apps and, and, going, and uh, going to play your game, then yes, but that's going to be a one in a, a million kind of thought that's going to happen. A quick question to you again, Shams. There's a question to you uh, that has come from Suparno Bhattacharya. Uh, he's asking, uh, will uh, brand budgets move to digital more from print or from TV? Uh, see, print is anyways on a, a slight, I would say, not a decline, but it's not, in, it's, it's not really growing at the level that it is right now. Uh, post covid also if uh, as as uh, we've spoken about it uh, the print itself the distribution itself is limited right now so for the next couple of months and i think uh, i think neil made this point in terms of cinema as well uh, that you know if if the public if print is not getting published there's not enough uh, places like in maharashtra and pune you're not allowed uh, newspapers right now uh, yes it will happen but i don't see and that's what it's related to the other uh, answer that I had given at the beginning that digital will grow, but that tapering off will happen when things go back to normal. That tapering off doesn't mean that we'll go back to pre COVID scenario. We'll still be higher than for digital, then that'll be there. But yes, for now, yes, it'll take from print, it'll take from uh, uh, retail, outdoor, for example. No one is stepping outdoor, so how do you? So outdoor is going to uh, be uh, the other one. And experiential. Uh, I think uh, a lot of experiential is going to move on to digital. How are you going to use augmented reality? How are you going to use stuff like that to bring experiential into your your homes? I think that is another thing that people are, uh, if lockdown continues and uh, you know even if for the next three months social distancing continues, uh, experiential agencies are going to start, you know, they are feeling the burn right now. There is no money being spent in uh, experiential agencies. So how do you bring that experience alive into your homes? How do you become a how do you bring a concert alive in your home? So those things are happening. So so I think those are going to attract spends onto digital. As I said again, it's going to go into the digital world. That line is going to blur into what is uh, offline, what is online. That's that's what's going to happen. Well, uh, uh, Neil, to you, uh, Madhuri Chauhan is asking, uh, what is your take on on the this uh, saying that digital is killing other mediums? Is actually happening now? I don't think so. Uh, uh, as I think uh, Pawan mentioned earlier, every medium has its own advantage and disadvantage. I don't think so. It is rightly uh, right to say that digital is killing all other mediums. I think it's 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 about the scenario, the situation in which we are living. It's about uh, what uh, 
what mindset consumers are in and it's about whom are you talking to so if you are talking to uh, someone who loves to read a newspaper and you would be want to be part of that loyal audience of newspaper you will put a ad on print and if you are talking to someone who really want to finish the last mile of conversion digital will be there so digital is not actually killing all i think all of them are subsiding each others and that is also relevant that entire adx is growing i mean it's not that only digital is growing digital is growing double to x than others but everyone else is still growing so i it's not fair to say that digital is killing any other medium i think it's uh, everyone is subsiding together with each other right uh pavan for you the question is that uh... with more uh, media dollars uh, being spent on digital and uh, clients pushing for efficiency by when will the industry finally get a unified measurement system oh i think it's a it's a million dollar question i don't Unified know how one answer for this <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah i mean uh, you know uh, from a measurement perspective uh, i think you know at future group we have our own measurement system because we do a huge amount of online to offline so we actually look at cost per coupon for example uh, that's the best way of measuring whether are we are we being efficient in terms of reaching out to our customers and what cost and obviously i mean there is a lot which we see from that lens i mean I, this is not subscribe or prescribe by any anybody but yeah that's our way of looking at things it just makes easier things easier for us and far more efficient but yeah i think <laughs> this is one answer which i think the agency folks should answer yeah i mean i mean i have no clue i mean this is like such a blur thing for all of us like you know i mean therefore as i said we have just created our own and we we follow that and it helps us uh shashi a uh, question from abhishek sharma uh, do you see a change in medium uh, for rb especially how do you see a market share deal happening within digital Sorry, uh, could you say that again, please? I couldn't hear you. Uh, do you see a change in medium for RB, especially? How do you see a market share deal happening with digital? Uh, see, market share uh, linked with a particular medium is not the not the question here. I think uh, uh, right now what we are looking at is yes, uh, the need for what I feel is the need for personal. uh sanitation and the sanitation index is definitely through the roof at the moment right even after this is gone what we what we see and what we foresee is the overall sanitation index to go up uh, as compared to other countries right you know we were really low uh, in the overall sanitation index uh, for for you know personal hygiene so as to say so with with an overall uh, you know uh, drive towards more personal hygiene definitely all brands which are there in the category will kind of you know see an impact uh, in in terms of uh, overall market share growth uh, now for me to sort of you know say whether it is attributed to a medium versus another that's a very different or difficult question to answer because uh, at the moment because for us you know how we see it is uh, the the media strategy for us has always been user uh, you know center user centric and not really platform centric so and uh, especially with 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 the covid scenario uh, you know we are actually we are we are very nimble and we are we have gone uh, you know almost at the beta stage where we are looking at each and every uh, you know parameter what is impacting for example different genres on on tv you know which, you know, uh, which were known to be the top grossers they are no longer the top grossers right Uh, we are seeing different genres coming up. We are seeing a different prime time versus non-prime definition is changing. So I think anything new earlier doesn't hold true in this current scenario. So I think it's it's best to sort of you know uh, assume uh, you know that that we are learning every day and trying to sort of you know see how best we can uh, you know uh, basically tackle the the media mix or the media strategy, looking at you know how things are. So for example, Bark will give us like you know weekly data and everything. So that actually gives a lot of you know things to sort of you know, see where the things are going so uh, attribution to particular medium is difficult uh, market share i am hopeful uh question for you uh, shams uh, from ravi uh, he's only given his first name post lockdown would uh, would like to know the urgency of brands for the business uh, which they lost during lockdown will they rush or is going to be staggered strategy to bounce back gradually 
I don't think uh, any, honestly, any brand is wanting any kind of staggered strategy. Uh, of course, there will be a strategy in coming back. Uh, the strategy will depend upon how the lockdown ends and what parts of the business. Of course, one thing is that you'll have to stagger it depending upon what part of the country opens up. I think, I, I believe that, that India is going to open up in a staggered manner. It's not going to open up, uh, on, you know, the entire uh, country is not going to open up on day one. So I think, first of all, you'll have to align yourself to that strategy. To the strategy of the government opening up parts of it, uh, but from the other perspective, what I think all brands are ready to be 100% on day one. Uh, uh, that's how the thinking is. I don't think there is any brand which is thinking in terms of saying that. Uh, so the, the staggering will happen depending upon how the country opens and not how the brands really are going to respond. The, resp the, the response from our side and from brands is that we are prepared to be uh, back to post-COVID scenario on day one. But the staggering will really happen on how, how the country opens up and how, how do we see people stepping out and how the response takes it. So I think that's it, it, it going to be just like everything is fluid right now. We need to be very fluid in the way at least for a two to three months uh, after the lockdown. I think that's that's really how we need. It's going to be very I just want to add, uh, you know, while, while I completely hear what you're saying, but I feel that as as states or cities as as they will open up i think there will be a lot of business pressure as well you know because i think lots of businesses will not even see a, uh, you know any 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 sort of cash flow coming in i think uh, therefore there will be a lot of pressure on the marketing team for for genuinely driving some of these uh, you know consumers for sure there's no answer to it how we will do it but i i, I feel that you know every marketing team should be ready for that as well we still have time for a couple of more questions. Uh, this one is for you, Pavan. Uh, uh, the name is not mentioned, uh, but uh, the question is, what is your view on brands uh, that have moved from their core business to selling categories like grocery and other essentials? Uh, see, anybody just moving at this point in time, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure uh, businesses will look at their own strength to sort of have moved from where they were or any other direction. Uh, but I think if it's related category for us, like just moving from offline to online was the most obvious thing to do. Uh, I'm not too sure about other brands, like, you know, really picking up something and moving to a different direction. I, I have, I have no point of view on this. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, I don't know how customers will react and how, how they will do uh, uh, post COVID as well. I have no idea about that, but yeah, I mean, uh, we moving to, uh, you know, keeping our strength alive and then moving to different medium was the most obvious thing which we did. Uh, uh, for you, a uh, question from Shiva uh, Sri Charan. He's asking, uh, how will brands maintain hygiene and do you think customers would come back soon post-COVID? How will brands maintain? Hygiene in terms of when they go back in the stores and, you know, taking care okay. of that thing. Uh, uh, and do do customers will move back? Yes. What's the, How soon would, would you think would it happen? Yeah. Brand, so <laughs> the answer to this, as as blur as everyone on the panel right now is, uh, the only expectation which we would have that things move quicker and faster, uh, so that as uh, the business starts moving in, there is cash flow start rolling in, and from a customer's uh, angle perspective, I feel. Uh, uh, there is demand. There is a lot of demand. The lot of businesses are as affected because there's a supply chain problem. So once that supply chain uh, is being sorted, I think the demand of customers will be uh, really flourished well. So I, 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 I have no direct answer to this, but I think it's uh, there's positivity looking in. Uh, and the demand, once supply chain is into place, I think things will fall back to normal. Right. Uh, there's a question for you, uh, Shashi, which is that... Uh, for brands like, you know, which are in this uh, hygiene category, um, uh, post-COVID, uh, will it continue to grow the way they are right now? I mean, will it mean something different for the category than what we saw before this, uh, this lockdown started? So I think overall, uh, you know, talking, talking about, say, uh, you know, Dettol as a brand, right? So this, this uh, Dettol as a brand is, uh, you know, built on, for example, uh, uh, the germ relevance, right? Now, the thing is that, uh, as, I, as I said earlier, the, the sanitation index of our country, uh, you know, has not been that great. 
but now uh, you know people are actually seeing the impact of even as basic thing as washing not washing hands properly right or washing hands with water but not with soap or washing hands with soap for just say 5 seconds or for so so i think there are basic things that uh, you know we have kind of you know tried to educate our consumers through various uh, you know uh, uh, interesting formats on various different platforms making it sort of you know a engaging way to sort of you know learn that habit uh, now those things for example you know the ways of you know like the six steps of hand washing uh, i'm not sure how many people at a large scale like india actually knew it you know what are the six steps of hand washing right or for example how many seconds you should wash your hands for now these are the small things that you know uh, for example we are trying to sort of inculcate the right habits now uh, you know when these habits are uh, continue for a longer period of time definitely the the overall category grows the need to sort of you know keep yourself sanitized will go up and therefore the baseline will shift uh, even post covid uh, for for brands in the hygiene space is what i feel uh, because we, we have seen the kind of you know movement but the entire even after the lockdown gets over and you know things are you know slightly getting but the paranoia whether it is real or perceived will stay i mean the degree of paranoia i mean you know with, with that is only for the time to tell but then this will stay and people will be much more concerned about their personal hygiene and uh, will sort of you know take it to ensuring that you know the house surfaces are clean the otherwise you know like just like water and you know for example just a mop would do the job but now you need for example disinfectant liquids you need to sort of you know make sure that your taps are disinfected you know those things uh, uh, the country was wasn't ready for but now i think uh, the the we see the uh, traction moving we see the new habits being formed so yes uh, this will this should go up what we feel we still have a lot of questions but unfortunately we are out of time now just a small announcement that on 27th april uh, 3 pm we'll have mr vikram sakuja uh, group ceo medicine media he'll be talking about news channels and their unparalleled role in current times i uh, would request all the viewers to join in we'll share more details and thank you for uh, your time and the great insights and uh, hopefully see you soon again thank you pleasure yeah, thank, thank you, thank you, so you much much. Yeah. thanks everybody it was a great uh, learning experience for all of us thank you guys much Good to see you all bye stay, stay safe bye